she's okay got it um gracie um as many of you know is um serves on the western municipal water district board of directors for division two and she's currently the vice president more than that she's a water chemist uh, with a master's in earth and environmental sciences and she works as a water quality compliance planner with the Riverside County um, Flood Control and Water Conservation District. And she's also continuing her education, getting um, a PhD. And I can tell you, there's nothing more than we want in this world right now uh, is other than water um, uh, specialists, water experts. So with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Gracie Torres. You've got the floor. Oh, maybe does she know? Hello, oh, there she is. <laughs> Marissa, did she hear me? Okay. Yes, <laughs> I did. I just just to check on time. How much? How much time do I have? I don't. I know the assembly member. Probably about fifteen, twenty. How much time do you need? Oh, I know I all night, but we don't perfect. have. <laughs> no, I think that's we'll, perfect. Okay, and then we'll leave some time uh, for anyone to, if they have questions. Yeah. Okay. So just. Just quickly um, to introduce myself, you know, a little, a little bit more. Even though uh, Freya did a great job, so I am um, your representative of Western Municipal Water District. Not just for those in Division Two, but Democrats. Um, I've been, um, you know, I've been on the board now for four years. When I was elected, I uh, made a few promises. Um, one was to bring more transparency to the board that to focus on water quality and water conservation. And so in my time there with really a lot of opposition before um, our friend Fazia joined the board, I was able to accomplish a few things. Um, one of which is live streaming. So if you are a Western um, customer, or even if you're not, but you belong to one of its, one of its wholesale agencies, such as Temescal Valley Water District, uh, Riverside Public Utilities, um, even if you're in, you know, in Rancho California Water District, those are all our wholesale agencies, which means they buy water from Western. Um, so, uh, you know, tune in. We have it recorded by Riverside County, and then we also go live every first and third Wednesday. Um, another thing that has been a huge focus of mine is water quality. Um, as you know, in um, recent years, we've seen emerging contaminants um, um, notably what's called PF, PFOAS, um, and th that is basically a fire, it, it was a fire retardant that um, was used for everything, and now we're seeing that it has bad, um, bad effects in water quality, as well as health effects, and so we've, um, I've, I've been instrumental in ensuring that we join any study, every and any study that can, that, um, that can be funded to learn more about the health effects of, of that contaminant. Um, if you ever saw the movie Grey Water with, um, oh, what's his name, the Hulk? <laughs> um, that, that is the contaminant they, they, that, that I'm talking about. Mark also, Ruffalo? Um, yes, Ruffalo. <clears throat> um, and so, so um, that's the contaminant that they've known for 30 years was, was very, very, uh, um, a health adverse and now we're seeing it everywhere we're seeing it absolutely everywhere if you're standing right now would your shirt probably has it your and so if, if essentially eventually you're going to ingest it through water um and so we've joined many studies um and that that also goes with COVID-19 um if as you remember when the first uh airplane that came down from COVID-19 landed at March Air Force Base which happens to be in my district um, I, same thing, I said, we need to enter studies and find out how it's being moved through water. And th there was significant studies done showing that it, it was moved through water. And, and because of those studies, um, they were able to create a filter to get rid of it before it, it became a waterborne disease. And so, um, and then water conservation, the drought, and I've been saying this for almost the last two years, we were not going to face a California drought. We were facing a global drought. And now we see the effects as you hear on the news um, constantly that water districts are asking people to turn, you know, turn down their sprinklers and 
um, you know, only water, only water at two in the morning for one minute. So all those things, um, I've been, I've been focused on making sure that we prepared because the, the, the reality is we know when it's coming, we just seem to wait to last minute to address it. Um, and another thing with water conservation has been efforts to bring more infrastructure into the area to capture storm water and have um, incentives for people to implement gray water systems at their home. So I'm, I'm still pushing on those things, uh, you know, because I think they're important, but um, as you know, I need three votes in order to get, to get that done. So hopefully this election season that will happen, but um, otherwise, and otherwise um, one of the things that I, I brought in very early on when I became a board member was um, some sort of workforce development, hire, new hiring practices so that we could have a more inclusive and diverse team at the water district. One thing I, I learned as a water expert myself was that I was very lonely, very, lit, very few Latinas, very few women in the water industry. And so I wanted to change that. So one of the first things I did was um, ask to implement a veteran's hiring policy. So if you're a veteran and you're qualified, you get an automatic interview. Um, that it, although pr that's probably one of the most conservative things I've done that, that didn't go over well with the rest of my board, but I'm still working. I'm working with uh, US vets to, to push something like that through. Um, and, then la and then create an apprenticeship program or a pipeline. So in, in California, we have about 1 million people without access to clean drinking drinking water. And that's in California. So uh, you don't have to look at Flint when you think about bad water quality in your backyard, that's the case. And so um, I created, um, again, brought it to my board, said I would really like to create an apprenticeship program so that we can get trained and skilled, a trained and skilled workforce ready to go when we have our retirements to address infrastructure needs, to supply water to a million people. Um, again, didn't do, go very well on our board. So what I did is I partnered with Channing Hawkins, who is at West Valley Water District and Rialto. And between us, um, and, we, and we partnered with the organization called JVS, we brought $1.5 million into the Inland Empire. Sorry, I just got a text message. I was endorsed by the Inland Empire Labor Council. So I'm really, <laughs> sorry, I just saw the text and, it, and I'm, I'm about to scream. So. Um, Scream later. <laughs> yeah, scream later. But with, with um, so what I, we did is bought $1.5 million um, and it's actually slated just for the Inland Empire to bring um, more women, more people of color, more people from disadvantaged communities into the water workforce, creating a pre-apprenticeship program, an internship program and a apprenticeship program. And I can proudly say right now we've hired um, in less than a year trained and the high and have placed in jobs about 10 people and so um i one thing that um i'm proud of is that I, i'll find a way i'll find a way for things to happen but um regardless of that the state of uh, if i can go over like how everything's going out western um one of the you know as we know most uh, elected officials ha had to pause everything they were doing and deal with covid um the day i got a phone call from my kids school which is, I'm going to go on a quick tangent, which is why we need more mothers in office, why we need more women in office, because I got a phone call at 10 a.m. saying, um, we're sending your kids home and we don't know when they're coming back. Um, I, I, got, I was getting ready to pick up my kids and my first phone call was to my general manager saying, we need to stop water shutoffs and we need to not, uh, not collect payment or late fees because mothers parents are about to have their kids at home every single day. And we were, and I'm proud to say, the first water district to, to implement a moratorium on water shutoffs and one of the few that implemented a moratorium on late fees. Um, throughout that time, uh, a lot of my ratepayers accrued a, a lot of water debt. That, I, that was about, I mean, I had a few customers with over $10,000 of water debt. Oh because Western is, it is the, the water we buy is from Los Angeles. So it's a, lot, a little more expensive than some of the areas around, the, uh, around here. Um, and during that time, I lobbied. I worked with our assembly members and our, um, our, our Congress members to try to find solutions to help alleviate that water debt. And, and we did. We alleviated almost about 80% when, when it seemed like the pandemic was slowing down, vaccines were in. Um, but unfortunately, um, you know, 
uh, it, it was it, the rate increases came right at around the same time. And um, while I understand the, the need for that, it was just not the moment. So I'm again, proud to say I was the only board member to vote against a rate increase as we come out of COVID. And again, it's only from my own experience, knowing that I don't, you know, I couldn't survive if I had $10,000 worth of water debt to raise my rates 12%. Mm -hmm. So we, we did work. We, we, they, it, it did pass, unfortunately, but, but, um, so my, I took it upon myself to reach out to residents, let them know what was going on. And, um, every single case where someone's water would be shut off when we lifted the moratorium, I, I personally lobbied, um, with our staff to help find a way to not shut off their water. And I'm still working on that. I get phone calls every day of customers crying, saying, please don't shut off my water. I still haven't paid, I can't pay off this debt. And I will, mm -hmm. I will basically take that case on myself, however I can, because, uh, because it's devastating. We, we came out of something devastating and it, it will be impactful for many years to come. Um, and and so, so those are some of the things that I've been able to accomplish with all odds. Um, for my first two, two and a half years, uh, four, four to one votes. Um, but now I have Fazia, who is a, a great, who's great on my board, a great colleague, and hopefully soon our assembly member. Um, and, but we, um, I'm, you know, actively just um, trying to make sure that people know about water. That's one of the things that I, I, I hope I've been able to do is um, make people realize that these seats are <laughs> incredibly important. And the way I know that is, I have four people running against me because, um, the, you know, there, I wasn't supposed to be in that seat and they still believe that. And so I think if we can wrap around our, wrap our heads around that, the first step to development is water. Then we'd understand why these seats are so coveted by Republicans. And so I, you know, I'm really excited to that for the work that we're, that I'm doing. I, you know, we, um, some of the things that are coming up, um, we're, we're, um, you know, big focus on the drought. We're calling on, um, you know, Gavin Newsom to, to help um, invest in infrastructure, but, but really the problem is local and, and can be solved locally. And that is through um, passing policies where we are capturing our own stormwater, like I mentioned before, investing in gray water systems, and of course, finding any way to give rebates for those who, um, you know, change their turf, their landscape. Um, but, you know, um, otherwise, you know, really are the, the big, the big issue right now for me is helping people through working through the pandemic and not just residents, businesses also, um, suffered a lot. And, um, um, even today, um, we raised, well, I, I wrote it against it, but, um, we raised the rates on businesses that, um, feed into our, what's called a brine line, what collects the salt from water systems. And again, businesses are, are devastated. Um, if you're in the city of Riverside, you saw how, how, much, how much they fought to not have the parking spaces, um, the, you know, the parking uh, prices go up. Of course, they, they, they're not thinking about the, a brine line and what that's gonna cost. And um, without really very little notice, um, their, their rates were raised. And so th those are the fights we're working on. I'm working on making sure I can get a little bit more support on my board, but. But yeah, I've um, ultimately, um, this is what I love to do. I've been in water for now a decade. Um, I do, you know, I've done everything from uh, personally, you know, pull water out of test tubes and test it under a microscope to now working on federal projects and um, federal infrastructure projects. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit about what's been going on at the district. Um, if you, I, I know you're all, if you're in, um, excuse me, in Western Riverside County, I'm uh, very happy to connect you with your board member, with myself, or with your representative at one of our wholesale agencies, um, so that we can, we can assist you however, however you may need. Um, and that, it really includes, uh, includes the drought. Um, as I, I know you've, a lot of you've been seeing that there are flash flood, uh, warnings, because there's supposed to be a thunderstorm, but the reality is those are just warnings until there are clouds in the sky, so. Um, so that, so however I can be a, of assistance, um, I'm, I'm happy to push, you know, more progressive policies, um, but I'm going to need your support to do so. So, um, oh, I'll take some you. questions.
Okay, I want, uh, well, thank you very, very much. Um, I think uh, we, have a, we have a question in the chat, but before we get to that, I did want to ask you, oops, well, your picture disappeared, Gracie. Um, uh, there, and it's, it's, and it's, okay. uh, there's two questions. I wanted to ask you more about the gray water because that seems to be something that should probably be done very quickly. And the other one is, it's my understanding, uh, from a variety of sources, that we have a lot of underground water in this area that we don't utilize. So I wanted to ask you if you could comment on them, and then we're going to talk more, uh, take Pat's question about capacity. So yes, um, in Northern California and Central California, where where really the, the drought is affecting, even though they have water, they're being affected more. They've implemented what are basically rebates to create uh, gray water systems. So gray water um, is what comes, basically comes the, the dirty water that comes out of your bathtub, right. your sink. You would collect that in, in a system in your home, filter it, and then use it for maybe not drinking, but showering your lawns. So depending on the type of treatment and how, um, and how sophisticated it is. So I, um, so I've been pushing for those types of rebates. If I'm collecting my water, and filtering it and use, reusing it, I, there should be some type of rebate or incentive for me to do so. Okay. Um, and then as, as far as, um, sorry, what was your second question? I don't yeah, know. It's about explain. the underground water. Oh, so yeah, as far as our aquifer health, we have he healthy aquifers, but um, our region, as you probably all know, is in incredibly eclectic. So um, while the city of Riverside has a very healthy aquifer under, under uh, groundwater, um, it has a very healthy aquifer, uh, an area like Orange Crest or Wood Crest does not have any, they're literally on a rock. Um, and then Corona, which also has a healthy aquifer, has a very contaminated aquifer. So um, a lot of, although um, there might be water we're not tapping into, a lot of that could be the cost um, and necessary to, to clean it. Okay. Um, again, which is why we need investment in infrastructure. Um, up, just updating infrastructure alone would alleviate a lot of that treatment, those treatment efforts. Okay, thank you. And then the question uh, Pat has is, um, could you speak in more detail about the need to build capacity to catch and store water? I think we did a little bit of that with the gray water in light of the projected superstorm. But you know, what are the ways that we can, um, you know, catch water? You know, store water. We do have dams. So yeah. yeah. So currently, it is actually prohibited for people to capture their own rainwater. Um, a, a lot of that is a health, it's because of a health hazard. Um, and uh, quite frankly, you know, to capture, you know, even what you might need for a day or, or a week, um, it would take barrels upon barrels. So, um, plus the treatment. Um, but that is why uh, um, investing, so in, in Los Angeles, um, they passed what was called Measure W, and it was essentially a, a small property tax that would um, focus all, all, the, all the money collected would go to stormwater systems. So having those localized systems that are collecting stormwater and storing it as opposed to sending it back towards the Santa Ana or Santa Margarita, depending on where you right, live. Right, right. Okay. That's very good. And Abel, what did, Abel also has a question. Abel? Yeah. yeah. I have a question about... Um... Sorry, when is it going to, eventually i feel like um this water crisis is obviously not going to get any better um no. uh anytime soon so uh what type of infrastructure eventually is going to be required like is it going to get to this point where eventually we're going to have to invest in in the in basically changing the ocean uh not changing the ocean but getting water and desalinizing that water from the ocean or desalination yeah. Desal desalination. That is uh, one huge effort that, um, um, and I, if I can just be blunt, that Republicans are trying to push for. The problem is it is incredibly, oh, there's two problems, you know, if you're, if you're looking at it. One, it's incredibly unsafe for our environment to do that. Our, our world is made up of 75% water, but um, the way it is, it was created was because that water needs to be where it is. So 
pulling it out of the ocean, desalinating it and bringing it to us would affect our ecosystem in ways that we still don't understand. Um, the second problem, if you are you know, someone that doesn't care about the environment, the second problem is it's incredibly expensive, incredibly expensive. The energy, the time, and the amount of water you receive for that, um, for that investment is so small, which is why it's not something you hear about in the Inland Empire. Because um, it would not only would we need to desalinate the water, then we need to truck it or wheel it here into the Inland Empire. And it, it, it's just so incredibly expensive and not yeah. worth, not worth it. So, yeah. Okay. Well, so hopefully okay. that's not the case. I know this, this, there are, they are pushing that. But um, luckily, our coastal our coastal conservancies have been fighting those efforts. I think I think so because I think uh, San Diego um, yeah. State University did Most a lot recently. of work on that already. Is my understanding mm -hmm. and discovered that it damaged the water the wa the the water life. You know, the fish and whatever the process, the desalination process was damaging to the ocean. But anyway, yeah. okay. So um, well, thank you very much, Gracie. Uh, we are so pleased to have you. We'd love to have you come by anytime. We'd love to have you here. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Gracie. Thank you. I'll put my, all my personal information in the chat. You can always oh, reach out to do. me whenever you need anything. Oh, please thank do. You. Thank you right. so much for your coming. We appreciate it. Okay. And then our next speaker, I believe, um, she is here. Yes. Hi, Melba. Where, where are you, S Sabrina? I'm, I'm about to join here. I saw you earlier. Did you just I've been here? here. Oh, yes. there you are. <laughs> okay, so um, Sabrina doesn't Thank need you. too much of an introduction, I, I don't think. I think we pretty much all know who Sabrina Cervantes is. I'll give you a very quick one. She's an um, assembly member and uh, she's represented the AD60 since 2016. And one of the things, she's a lifelong resident of Riverside. I, and one of the things, and she's very well educated, and one of the things that I really like about Sabrina, is she's always willing to stop in our club and give us an update on what's going on. And we really appreciate that. So thank you very much, and thank you for being here again tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Freya. Thank you so much to everyone making sure my I am not muted. Uh, thank you for having me. I, I always do enjoy coming in and speaking to you all and giving you an update on the work that we're doing in Sacramento and the work that we have to do during the midterms. Uh, but I am currently in Sacramento. We are nearing the end of our legislative session. We have two weeks, two and a half weeks to go. Uh, so we have hundreds of bills before us uh, that we are ready to take up on the assembly floor. I have several bills myself that are currently sitting in the Senate awaiting to be heard and hopefully out of the Senate and onto the governor's desk shortly after. One of my bills has been signed into law so far and we have nine left on the, on the Senate floor. And the bill that was just signed into law, AB 1619, is actually dealing with voter uh, ballots, making sure that they are counted more frequently by reminding registered voters that the signature that they use to register initially will be used to compare their mail-in ballot when they do cast their future vote. Yeah. We want to make sure that we uh, are counting as many ballots as possible, making sure that they are not thrown out. And so it's a lot of it is about voter education and reminding uh, voters. So we're happy that that got signed into law by Governor Newsom. I do want to highlight just a, a couple bills for you that are currently sitting in the Senate. One of them that I know this group has been very engaged with and following is AB 1307, which creates an independent citizens redistricting commission for the Riverside County Board of Supervisors. Uh, we've come a long way, and I'm happy to report that uh, we should be getting a uh, the bill heard, hopefully, if not tomorrow, Monday. And... We have support from Senator Richard Roth and so many others who have committed uh, that they would be supporting this bill. And 
another thing I want to note is we fought hard. I fought hard in the state budget process to make sure that we got the funding within the state budget. And so we did. So we just need to get this bill off the Senate floor and onto the governor's desk. So that is the next path. Uh, the second bill I want to highlight is making reform uh, on how our California State University system handles sexual assault and sexual assault on their campuses. And that's AB 1467. Uh, the third bill is dealing with uh, how our, the requirements that county registrars have to publish a list of polling places, well, multilingual polling place workers uh, to help voters who do not speak English. We want to make sure that we are uh, reaching out and we're providing this information online, uh, again, so that voters have the opportunity to go to uh, a polling place where they can get uh, the proper assistance and language that they are looking for. And that is AB 1631. The last bill I will mention is providing transparency to college students about housing wait lists, excuse me, about housing wait list uh, on their college campuses. We know that housing is a tremendous issue statewide. Uh, it's also issue on our college campuses. And so we wanna make sure that we have uh, transparency when it comes to how many students are on the housing wait list. Uh, what does that data look like? We have no knowledge of this as the state legislative body, and we need to be able to have the data so that we can move policy forward uh, to be able to assist our students who are in dire need of housing. So as you know, uh, with the balanced budget this year, we passed an on-time balanced budget in June. Just some key highlights of the state funding. Uh, we've helped bring back a tremendous amount of resources right in our own communities. Uh, there are four that I do want to highlight for you. One of them is dealing with UC Riverside. We got $201 million for the infrastructure improvements at UCR. Jose, Assemblymember Medina and I have been working in conjuncture with this. And so I just, uh, we just ended a wonderful floor ceremony with all those who will be leaving this legislative session, including Assemblymember Medina. I just want to applaud his efforts uh, because he has fought so hard to make sure to put UCR on the map to make sure that we are working together to improve uh, the quality of education, our infrastructure at UCR, and changing that narrative in the Inland Empire. And so uh, it's been so wonderful to work with him and to accomplish this big budget win this cycle. Uh, another exciting thing that I like to mention is the Inland Empire Technical Trade Center. I was able to work with uh, the budget in both houses to accomplish $33 million in, uh, through our budget for only the second of its kind technical trade center in our entire state. And so this is the future of our region. And so we are working collaboratively with our uh, chancellor, our Riverside Community College District, Chancellor Isak, uh, who has been a wonderful partner. We're working with our labor brother and sisters, uh, Ricardo Cisneros, and so many others from the K through 12, uh, you know, school districts who have been a vital partner in this as well with our workforce development partners. We have so many people at the table to make sure that we are successful in this endeavor. And so State Senator Richard Roth and I will be looking at what we do next year. We are already starting to work on that proposal. Uh, an important part of the city of Riverside, our Citrus State Park. And we have a wonderful rich history in our own community. And so I was able to advocate for $30 million for infrastructure improvements at the Citrus State Park. Uh, this is going directly to the city of Riverside. We will be working with the city as well as Senator Richard Roth and many others uh, for the infrastructure improvements uh, of our beautiful historic Citrus State Park. Uh, as many of you heard, we also got $25 million for the Cesar Chavez Community Center in Ward 2 and the city of Riverside. So the city of Riverside will be receiving a lot of state funding that they will be overlooking and we will be working closely with them to make sure that these dollars are spent accordingly. Uh, but we're gonna be renovating the Cesar Chavez Community Center, the school, Riverside School of the Arts. And we're very excited uh, that uh, Assembly Member Medina uh, and I were able to accomplish this, this cycle. 
and just just a couple other issues. I know some of you uh, may be uh, may be of interest. Uh, Two million dollars to continue the renovation and improvements of a park in the city of Corona uh, that's a Griffin Park. And so it's a dog park. It's uh, where we're able to expand, uh, make sure more families have beautiful open green spaces uh, in, in that downtown um, area of Corona uh, where many of our families lack sufficient open space. Uh, and lastly, I, I mentioned already the $1 million for the Independent Redistricting Commission. So. Those are some key level highlights uh, that I wanted to mention to you all today, uh, key takeaways. And now to transition to uh, midterms, we have just two weeks left in this legislative session. After that, we'll be returning to our districts where we really change and focus uh, you know, our efforts on not just my re-election, uh, I would love to count on your support for my re-election to the State Assembly in 8058. Uh, I do come into Riverside even more, the downtown portion of Riverside, uh, por portions of uh, Casablanca, Ward 2. I'm excited to uh, be uh, coming back uh, home for what it feels like and look forward to working with all of you to get the vote out. Uh, we need to make sure that we can drive as many people uh, to turn out to vote. Uh, look forward to continuing uh, to just, you know, share with folks why, why it is so important that we focus on these midterms. And there are so many races that we need to invest our time in. And it's not just mine. We need to look at races for water board, as you've heard. We need to focus on races for school board that are so critical to electing the right representatives. I've endorsed many candidates at the local level, and I encourage you all to take a look at the dynamic candidates that we have that are running locally. Uh, they need your support uh, equally. And so I just wanted to, to throw that out there. I know that uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us to ensure uh, that folks are aware of the propositions that are on the ballot and and just engaging, engaging with our communities because Democrats, we must do better. We must do a better job at engaging with folks. And I welcome your thoughts, your suggestions. Uh, if there's any way that I, what I can do to help you all and uplift the work that you do, please let me know. Uh, I will end with one note. Uh, I am honored to be the incoming chair of the Latino Legislative Caucus. Uh, and so we are going to be uplifting the voices of nearly 16 million Latinos in the state of California. Uh, but again, I, I look forward to working with all of you as we really turn out uh, our communities and make sure that we elect the right representatives uh, in each of these areas. And so again, just thank you and happy to answer any questions at this time. Well, I, I, I wanna say thank you. Uh, I'm exhausted from listening to everything that you've been doing. It's, you're quite amazing. The legislature has been very successful um, this year. And, and uh, I appreciate all the things that you've been doing for Riverside and our area. And I really loved hearing about the technical school. I think that's really pretty incredible. Uh, I liked hearing about, you know, the, the housing, you know, with Cal State. I don't even know if Cal State knows, has the information on their housing that you guys would like to have. So I think that's an interesting um, question, an interesting question there. You know, we are um, just getting all the endorsement information and all, getting ready to do a lot of work. Uh, some of us are going to uh, a registration training uh, tomorrow on how to get you know, more people registered, how to manage Republicans when they come to mess up your registration table and, you know, a few things like that. Uh, but I think that that's one thing um, that we can all do. But I, I agree with you uh, when you look at what the Republicans are doing, you know, they're starting at the very lowest levels of getting their people into office and then they just move them to where they want. Well, we Democrats have to do the same thing. We do have a member of our own e-board who's uh, running for a school board, uh, Abel Chavez. Yay, Abel. He's running for the new uh, school board. So we will be helping and supporting him. May but, I ask Abel, I'm sorry, what, what uh, school board are you running in? Oh, the new view in school board. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Well, please reach out. Okay, I will for sure. Thank you. And so we're pretty excited to have one of our very own eBoard uh, members running for office. And uh, but there's a lot of people that we know that we need to help and we have to work very hard to uh, get them to le elected. And on that note, uh, we are sponsoring a meet and greet for Fazia Rizvi on September 8th at the home of uh, Christine Roberts, one of our uh, members and our, one of our former board members here. So uh, we are going to be doing as much as we can. And if you see an area that needs our help and where you think that we can go and do an intervention, please don't hesitate to let us know. Fantastic. So, does anyone have any questions for Sabrina? I'm not seeing any. Can you raise your hands if you do? And then I can see the hands. No. Just to leave um, your information so I can reach yeah, out. She yes, let me have, uh, I'm sorry. You know, there was a slide. There was a slide deck you all could have followed. I have uh, my staff okay. is on. But, <laughs> but if, if Paco, can you throw up the last slide if possible? So with all of our contact information for those who'd like to get a hold of us. Is we it, are used to your slide program, but that's okay. You did great with that. Well, hold on, Paco. Is... Paco has the last slide with all of our information we can share so, with you. Yeah, we have to let uh, him share. Did you get him? Yeah, I think um, Pat Eichmann has a question okay. in the chat. There we go. All right, Pat. Pat has a question. Okay. In the chat. So this is how you can get in touch with uh, Sabrina. And um, Pat, can you just ask your question? Right. I just wondered what Sabrina saw as a couple of issues that we're ignoring as Californians or not paying enough attention to, you know, from, from your perspective, looking at things as a whole, what are we not doing that we mm. should be doing? You know, uh, I, I think that's a wonderful question. Uh, a lot of the times we focus on what are the top issues that Californians care about. And so we've done so many polls. We followed what voters are caring about, especially, uh, you know, as we come up to the midterms. And we know some of those issues that are at the top of, of the deck, right, which is housing, uh, housing, homelessness, uh, looking mm -hmm. at our economic uh, opportunities. And so maybe issues that we are missing uh, I would say in, in the area of higher education, we need to do uh, more uh, to, to drive upward mobility, uh, especially, which is why I'm so passionate about my role as the chair of the jobs committee, why I'm so passionate about this Inland Empire Technical Trade Center. We have an opportunity here to transform, uh, you know, the workforce and what we do to get people good paying living wage uh, jobs that provide benefits. And so, We've lost so many students during the course of the pandemic where they stopped going to college, where uh, so many uh, just stopped their higher education endeavor. And so we need to look at why, you know, what are those barriers to reenter, uh, you know, looking at ways that we still... There's so many first generation students who are who are entering uh, the higher education realm. And, and at the end of the day, it's educational equity, it's opportunities. And you know, success that will, um, you know, will be better for uh, providing more opportunities. And so I'm just thinking in the higher education job space uh, realm, manufacturing, we have a robust manufacturing industry within the Illin Empire. And so looking at ways that we can work collaboratively with those uh, who are looking at, you uh, you know, filling so many uh, job opportunities that are great, like I said, great paying jobs here locally so that families don't have to travel outside. And so these are very, I know, Inland Empire focused, but higher education statewide. Uh, misinformation is a one big thing I want to point out uh, that I think that we are not talking about enough. Uh, it happens in our own families. Uh, we know that we need to find ways to better engage and communicate uh, with those around us. Uh, and we can't lose sight uh, of, of what disinformation does um, and how you know, we can't allow Republicans to do what we are seeing at the local level and use the rules to their advantage, right? Uh, I think it's important for us to call it out uh, when we see it. Thank you. Hey, Paco, could you take down that, uh, your sharing screen? I don't think we need that there. Okay, thank you very much. No, um, you. So, you know, one of the things I was interested in to find out, you know, I was at a meeting where they were saying that uh, Corona's 
strategy for dealing with the homeless, they'd reduce their homelessness by 35%. And of course, everybody in Riverside said, yeah, they sent them over here. But we know that's not the case. So, uh, so do you have any um, ideas or strategies that you think that we need to be looking at very closely in dealing with the homeless issues? We know that there is uh, a lot of discussions happening between the different cities, uh, City of Corona, City of Riverside, City of Herbert Valley, City of Norco. They've all really been working together. Uh, we have even the County of Riverside, right, coming into this conversation. Uh, through our state budget, we've delivered a, an incredible amount of money down to the local level so that each city can address it differently. And I think that to put a blanketed approach is not going to solve it. And so I believe that we have great people. I We worked directly with them. We've sat in meetings. We've sat in roundtables. I was part of a robust group of colleagues up and down the state that joined us in the city of Corona to discuss housing and homelessness and our solutions and what that looks like. Uh, the city of Corona has a different solution than the city of Riverside. Right. Um, yeah. And so I think that it's uh, it's important if, if you have, you know, you all have, uh, you play a part in what you would like to see happening in the city. And I encourage you to follow along. I know many of you do the city council meetings and reach out to your representatives to share. If there are federal dollars coming down when it comes to housing, we need to accept these dollars. We should not be turning away resources. And it's frustrating, you know, for me as a state representative, when we are fighting for every dollar, because we know that the Inland Empire is always, has historically, that has changed since Jose, myself, and Roth, and others have been elected. A, Eloise Gomez, uh, Majority Leader Gomez Reyes and Assembly Member Ramos, you know, we are working collectively to make sure that we are bringing resources back to San Bernardino and Riverside County. But that has not been historically true. And so when we are turning away federal dollars, that is a slap in our face. We need to make sure that we are holding our local elected officials accountable as well to make sure that, listen, we, we need to accept these dollars. There may be parameters. Let's work on that. Let's not lose sight of the fact that we need these resources uh, to address uh, housing and homelessness and our uh, just our unhoused uh, individuals. And I know, again, there are many local issues that are happening uh, that we are following along on. But at the end of the day, it's our locals who get to make that decision on how to spend the money. Uh, and we are trying to be part of the solution. Uh, we will bring in key experts. We will work with our local cities. Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah, we, we kind of want to approach it where a little hands off, but still engaged. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Does uh, anyone else have any questions for Sabrina? I don't see any. Well, Thank you very much, Sabrina. We always welcome you coming and uh, please always keep us in your thoughts when you uh, want to come and uh, give us an update. We're always, you're always welcome here. Thank you to you all. I truly appreciate the work that you do. Look forward to seeing you out uh, during the midterms. Yes. Okay. We are going to be out there. <laughs> okay, Sabrina. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for dropping in. I know a lot of our candidates are very busy. Um, tonight, uh, uh, Will is having a, listen to the words, town hall, you know, where people get together and actually like talk and have conversations. Isn't that an amazing thing? We love those. Uh, <laughs> and um so I do see a few here with surrogates, and I just kind of wanted to go, um, is, okay, Matt's here for real? Let's just go. I think that's the order I kind of had here. If you would, uh, where did they go? Um, yeah. Oh, well, we don't, any surrogate for Mark tonight? I don't recognize any names. Some of you, I've got one with no name down here and just a phone number. And that's, I, uh, we think that that's uh, Nora. It is okay. Nora, because I called and that was the voicemail greeting. That's, okay, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Um, other than that, so we have no one here for Mark. After that would be, I just ran down, is Will Rollins. We have those candidates. Uh, Matt, how's things going and what can we do to help? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, things are things are going well. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, things are going well. Uh, yeah, as you said, tonight we have a, a town hall and I am unfortunately missing it because I uh, took one of those positive tests earlier this afternoon. Oh, wow. um, and so I'm out for the town hall. But yeah, Will's out there night, tonight. We, we had really good attendance and it was live streams. You could have joined from, from online. Um, and he answered, took questions from the audience um, and, and had a really good time. Uh, and so uh, they're wrapping that up now, I think probably in some selfie line of, uh, of Will's creating and then uh, they're heading out. Um, and we're going to have another one up in Corona. Um, and I think Tracy is still looking to lock a date for that. And so I'm sure all y'all will get an email um, as soon as we lock a date and location uh, for that. that. Is, is that in person? You planned that in person too? In person, yeah. And we're okay. planning on- And the live think, stream was really great too. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we'll, we'll, we'll do the same thing for, for that one as well. Um, and we, we're probably trying to find a space that fits about 200 up there in Corona. Um, okay. oh, and so- great. Wow. And so yeah, should be should be a lot of fun. Um, and so that's part of our district tour. Um, other than that, uh, we have a field director that hit the ground last week. I'm excited to start our GOTV program. Um, we're going to be talking to Dems, um, you know, mid propensity Dems um, and high propensity no party preference voters, trying to get out those Dems and, and convince those no party preference voters to vote Dem uh, up and down the ticket. And so uh, as long as you're signed up on our website, uh, the top link, and I'll, I'll drop my info and in the, the link in the chat, our field director uh, is out at that town hall, um, but uh, I'll drop the, the information in the chat and our volunteer link sign up. As long as you're signed up on there, you'll uh, see all of our, our options for phone banking, uh, texting, uh, door knocking, um, and then we have a, a relational program that will probably start up here soon. Um, and so that is all the the exciting updates for me. Um, I will I'll pass it back off. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Matt. And who's next? I had my little bounty. I think it was uh, actually Sabrina. Uh, but I said, I think we kind of covered hers. Our Paco, did you stick around? Anybody else still here for Sabrina? I think she did a wonderful job herself. She did. That sounds good. <laughs> and of, of course, then we can come down. Uh, Maha, is that you here for Pausia? Oh, okay. I Hi, I can speak on Fadia. Well, oh, okay. well yeah. uh, Yusuf is here as well. Yeah, we have, yeah, we have two representatives okay. here. We'll take one of you to speak for yeah, We're just <laughs> really excited to be here with the GGR Club. You know, we have some exciting news that we're working on. Um, mm -hmm. So if you guys missed the press enterprise yesterday, um, mm -hmm. our opponent, Mr. Bill Saley, uh, has apparently actually on June 7th, re-registered and voted in Orange County election outside the district. It is insane that he could do this. And so we are fighting everything that we can to make sure he is disqualified because it's insane that someone would actually ever do this. Uh, and so we're really excited and we're just hoping that you can share this news. Uh, thank you, Crystal. She was one of our uh, person who filed a citizen's complaint. And so there are multiple pieces that we're work that the citizens are working on uh filing with the ag with the da uh and the sos right now we're waiting to hear from the secretary of state what's going on but we are very hopeful that he is not being able to be on the ballot so we are fighting at every level and we would appreciate any support you can give either by sharing this uh and the the article on your Facebook, uh, hashtag OC Billy, because he is from the OC. Uh, <laughs> I know, but I'm sorry, that's good. Right? We, we have to, right? We have to show where he's from. Uh, the second, if you, you know, we, we're, it's going to be a fight still. So any financial contrib contribution and just like we will be starting our canvassing soon uh, and our, uh, oh voter outreach no matter what we're still going to be outreaching to voters to tell them how important our election is and how we can get the vote out for helping down ballots so we're going to still be doing a our campaign plan no matter what's happening while we work on the other side of this a uh, second we as um Freya mentioned earlier, we're so excited that the DGR is hosting a meet and greet with us for us on uh, September uh, 8th and so we're working on the flyer. I'll be sending that shortly. And we're just excited. Yeah, and we just appreciate all the support that you've given us. And, well, you know, we're really excited for the new development. We'll keep you updated. We're hoping we can tie in uh, Mr. Calvert in it as well. Uh, 
as Mr. Okay, Billy. So where did you get that? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to wait to the end, but I just can't. Yeah. So where did you get that thing about he had a room at Calvert's house from? <laughs> so right, oh. so where he registered, so his district director is Jolene Murphy. And so when we checked the data, when we bought data in March, Mm -hmm. we saw that they were registered at the same address. Oh, well, that's yeah. really interesting. Yes, yeah, so they have, they were registered, exactly. And, you know, with Ken Calver being this, his former employee, it's, you know, all very sticky. Oh, very interesting. Right. Very so, nice. yeah, we're hoping we are, uh, you know, this is, it's a big deal. You know, they all the Republicans yell about voter fraud, but uh, clearly we have someone committing actual voter fraud. You know, so we appreciate anything you can do to amplify this message and making sure that we get the Democrats out to vote. Because no matter what, we, we need them out to vote. And so just want to thank you all for your efforts and let's do this. And I, okay, and Joseph uh, and Melba already put the article. So oh, thank you all. Thank you. And any questions, you know, we're here to answer. Me and Yusuf are here. Uh, I, you know, so one of the, we do need to, uh, we do need to get people out to vote. And that's going to be, I think, uh, we have to get people excited about voting. Yeah. We really have to, you know, get people registered. And once they're registered, we do have to make every effort to get them out to vote, to get them to vote. <laughs> Because there are more of us than them if we would just vote. You know? yeah. Exactly, exactly. And we're just hoping, you know, with this news and like not with Hester, Mike Hester and uh, Chad Bianca not being on the ballot, we're hoping, you know, those were the ones who kind of drove people during the primary and Democrats just in general don't vote on off-year primary. So we're hoping with this, and you know, with this news, with Prop 1 on the ballot, with, you know, Will Rollins on the ballot, we can make sure that Democrats turn out and help our down, down ballot. That's what we need to do. We all need to work together. We really yeah. do. And I think that's, the, one of the things that we probably should all talk about real soon is um, how we can work together so we don't duplicate efforts, yeah. but, we do, but we, you know, put our efforts where they're needed. Exactly. And I know one thing I recently learned from the party, the California Democratic Party, they're offering an auto dialer for any candidates and any club. So if you're interested yeah. in doing like a phone bank, let me know and I can help coordinate that. Oh, yes, get us an yeah. auto dialer, please. Yes. The thing I, I didn't see in Joseph's there, too. Uh, with the new district redistricting that's drawn, the area that UCR covers would be in Cafalcia's different yeah. district. Right. Exactly. Or we don't want to say the other word. Uh, the, and all the work that both uh, Jose and Sabrina have done to get the funding for those things. I just really don't want to see that go to waste and keep the ball rolling on all the wonderful things that they've done for the Inland Empire. So exactly. we get the teamwork. We got to have the teamwork. We got to keep, keep it going. Yeah. And we, we can do that with Fauzia. We have to, uh, exactly. we have to, uh, I won't name names, but she's here tonight. When I mentioned Fauzia, somebody here said, Who's that? So now that's why, you know, we know yeah. we need to really uh, get her name out there, get people to know who she is. You know, every time I hear her talk, I, I just mm. think more highly of her. You know, she's, a, she's just a very, very special person. She's highly intelligent. She has really, really good ideas. And we have to really get that across to the general public. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I know I'm a little, just a little biased, but just I agree. A little fully. biased. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we definitely appreciate you know, and we need to get the work out because there's this this whole redistricting process really kind of yeah, it just really messed well, I don't up think for a lot of people. Right. A and lot so of people don't know what district they're in, so that it, what is, exactly we need to so, educate people about that. 
Exactly. So, you know, this is, it's going to be a very janky election, you know, and so we just have to make sure we get people out to vote and make sure people know that there's election and that there's a new district and they're going to have a new representative. You know, when we were walking during the primary, people were like, oh, no, we want to vote for Sabrina. We were like, she's not a family member anymore. We, we would love to vote for Sabrina too, but, you know, we have someone on the ballot and we want to make sure that we protect UCR, we protect our district because it's it's a close. It's gonna be a close race. If we get all the well, Democrats. I know. Votes. I think it was Yusuf. You told me that someone thought that Fauzi was running against Jose. Yeah. Well, Jose yeah. isn't running. So I mean, you know, it's like so we really have to get all of this straightened out. Be a lot education. Of education there. Mm -hmm. Is that is your? I have a Sheila. Your hands up. Is this a question for Maha? It's a question for either Yusuf or Maha. Yeah. Okay. Um. First, I know how excited Yusuf was when the newspaper story broke because he texted me right and early to let me know. <laughs> and I went, oh, hot dog. That isn't actually what I said, was it? Yeah. Um, but, my, but I do have a question after I got yeah. done with the uh, expletives of excitement. Uh, so, and I know they, the Secretary of State doesn't really know what to do about this because I guess it's never happened before. Never. So if he is taken off the ballot, Will the person that came in third be added back on? Ma, I, Ma, let me take that. Yeah. Okay. So, hi, everyone. So, hi, Yusuf. So, the way it works is this, and we are working with different attorneys and everything. So, you have to understand one thing. It's so new that Secretary of State might will not be able to remove them and send the things back to Riverside County. Or you have to file the lawsuit and judge has to decide oh. the reason why, because the way the law was written, he's only taking the law literally and not taking the intent of the law. So sometimes the law is written, it does not spell out each and every scenario, but the intent is there. The intent was that you must be a resident at the time of pulling the paper. It means your intention is to stay in the district for the rest of the time. He's only taken that. So, no. Even if he's taken off the ballot, the primary uh, elections will not be challenged or, or will not be uh, re redone. Unless he stays on a ballot while we go ahead and, and, and uh, file the lawsuit and we win the lawsuit, but he ends up winning the seat. Then his name will be pulled out and there will be a, spe a special election called at that time and it will be start over again. So I'm just going to, uh, no, Maha did a great job. Thank you. Maha is actually my right hand and my left hand. I'm just a brain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ma. But no, she is actually, we are looking for more leaders like her in, 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 in our party. But she did a great job. But I'm just going to give you some, a few things, a few pointers, and not just as, as a father's campaign manager, but as overall, mm -hmm. as a Democrats. And as a Democrats, we need to make sure that even when we're talking about this particular incident, first thing, we need to let everyone know what is happening. You know, it'll be nice for us not to push it as a Democrat, but just push it as an American that we do not accept or allow these kind of things in our democracy, which happens in a world which we go and rescue every two years, right? So this message, if we put it out, that pick the right candidate, pick the candidate who really cares, pick the candidate who who really wants to do good for you. This is a universal message. It's not just belongs to Democrats or Republicans. So, and it's very important. And in that way, we might will be able to convince the moderate Republican to pick Will Rollins over Ken Calvert, right? Because he's the right candidate. Um, Fawzia, Fawzia Rizvi over Bill Asali, or even in, in that matter, all the other seats. Unfortunately, um, Riverside County picked Chad Bianco, right? And we know what kind of person he is because maybe the message is not correct. Message is not there of universal. Yes, we love the partisan uh, politics, but what the intent is to do good for people. We never look at we're doing good for a Republican or we're doing good for a Democrat. 
or NPP? Sabrina was here. Every daughter she brought to the district, she never said that, okay, only Democrats come on the right side and, and, and collect your thing. So that's not how it works. So we as a Democrat, we need to rise up and actually not just show that we are proud of our democratic values, but we also an American who wants to do good. And if we send that message out, that will help us convince many people to vote for those who really deserve the seat. So, sorry. I, you know, I couldn't agree with you 100% more than what I uh, 200%. Last year we did uh, a diaper, a diaper drive, you know, for uh, women who uh, need diapers. We you all know it's a major problem for lower income women to have diapers for their children. They can't go to daycare and all of that. So that's last year. This year we started investigating. Uh, we're going to probably adopt a street. We have to do a little bit more work on it to clean, you know, to clean up that street. But so part of whom we are, and we're going to get into this later as a club is, is service. And uh, we provide service. And we don't just, one of the things that people like to say about Democrats is that, well, we only see you at election time. But we're trying to change that so they see us all the time. Mm -hmm. you know, we're out there with the diaper drive. We're out there with uh, the street cleaning and whatever projects you know we want to come up with. And we're gonna, and we're, we need to be more focused. I think as a party and as Democrats, we need to be more for, focused on that and how we get because then they remember us not as just somebody on a on a ballot, but they know, hey, those Democrats do good stuff. You know, and uh, they remember us then. Exactly. And answer to your question real quick. I know they were running out of time. Who is Fawzia Rizvi? Right? That, that, that was a question popped up. So Fawzia Rizvi is a person who started a nonprofit organization in the middle of pandemic and helped give, give out 35 million pounds of food, 50,000 families in Inland Empire, 110 food drives, 25,000 face masks, and I can go on and on because I was right Incredible. there doing all this. But if you look at it, that's what Fazia Rizvi is. And she, though she is very vocal Democrat and everybody knows that she's a Democrat, but she got, she earned the respect from Republicans and NPPs as well as Democrats because she was doing it out of her heart for everyone. And I think we need to promote these kind of things among all of us. So we do not look at each other and try to just find the faults in each other, but we actually appreciate what we can do for each other. And that's how we'll make the better society. Thank you, Yusuf, thank you so much. And she is just that wonderful, I mean, one of the people that she helped with the PPEs was there to talk about how they were working and they didn't have a, enough PPEs and how she went and got those PPEs. They made, they made the PPEs for yeah. them. I mean, that's pretty, it's pretty incredible. So she's such an incredible person. She really is. And she is Maha's mother, you know. She is. <laughs> <laughs> she's a little, a little biased. She makes a lot of good things. <laughs> Including my That's right. Agreed. So, I think that's the best thing she did. Yes. Uh, I agree. You know, I, I once had one of a very esteemed professor of mine in graduate school said to me, you know, we all think we do all these great things, but the greatest thing anyone ever can do for the world is to produce a good human being for the future. Absolutely. And that what more could you say than that? You know, that's mm. as you can see, I never forgot that. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so um, who else do we have, Melba? Um, slipping in, uh, just help me out down there. Anybody else? Otherwise, I didn't see uh, Brian. Abel, Abel is a candidate. Hey, Abel on. is a candidate. I got a list. And Brian, I didn't see anybody for Brian. Um, and Gracie, we've already heard we had. Those were the ones I had on my list that we sent out. Uh, Abel, did you have... A quickie for us since you a are speech not for us. Can yeah, we do? I have a I have a little speech for you guys. You guys oh, ready? Are you yeah. I'm gonna time you? Alrighty. <laughs> so hi guys, my name is Abel Chavez. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know me. I've been here for a while. Um, but just in case you don't, um I am a 
teacher and I am a parent. And uh, for a long time, our school, our school system has seen a decline in ratings and test scores. And I'm here to fix that issue. As a teacher and a parent, I've seen success in my class and my school and my home. And I wanna share that success with the, with the town I grew up in. Through my professional experience as a chemistry teacher, I've discovered a passion for servant leadership and continuous improvement. I volunteered to take the lead for a curriculum-based planning committee for the science department. In this role, I facilitated group discussions to improve curriculum plans for the upcoming weeks. I utilized test scores as a metric to determine the curriculum that needed improved, improved teaching strategies so our students could get the most uh, value out of their learning. Um, basically, my students and all the students that were under um, my, my, my rule, or <laughs> not my rule, but you know, um, <laughs> my plan uh, have increased their test scores drastically. And um, I want to basically implement that in my district or where I'm running. Um, we basically need to create a system where we define the scope and sequence of the standards taught. We, we need to remove unnecessary lessons and implement proven teaching strategies to ensure high value learning. Um, I come with experience to perform uh, all the functions of a school board member, and I'm eager to devote the time and energy that this community deserves to make our children the leaders of tomorrow. I appreciate your vote. Oh, woohoo! Thank you. And I have to add something to my friend Abel's statement. Abel's doing something that I have a feeling that his opponents won't be doing. He's forking out some big bucks. Yeah, to have a candidate statement in the voter guide. Wow. You pay by yeah. word. Yeah, Abel, do you, you, actually, you pay by who can vote. Abel, do you want to talk about that for a minute? Because I'm so proud of you. You have a contact. Oh. Give us your contacts and where we can. Yeah, put your information in the chat, candidates. Mm -hmm. Chavez. Is there like a, <laughs> well, I do need to know about that. Um. Well, let's see. Um. I guess right now I'm just taking, I don't know how, I don't know how to do donations. <laughs> I've never been donated to. Yeah, we don't, so. well, we don't do that tonight anyway. So we no. Ab Ab and Abel's working with Bill Hedrick to figure out some of these oh, things. Right? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, you have Bill Hedrick helping you? Yeah. Yeah. You're a lucky fellow. <laughs> and so here's my contact information. I'll leave it in the chat if you, in case anybody wants to message me. Oh, well, obviously. And um, thank you guys so much. Yeah, it was, uh, I think I think it was like $500 for the candidate statement. And then I got some voter information. So that was pretty cool. Um, I'm going to be doing, doing a little bit of walking around and hopefully I can get some voters. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Abel. Thank, thank you, guys. you very you make much. us all feel very, very proud. We are very uh, proud of our, our, our young man here. <laughs> yes. I'm going to finish up real quick and just make sure everybody... Um, Where'd you go? Oh, there it is. Um, I wanted to real quick share this because it was on the, um, yeah, there it is. Come on. Um, I put this on, I had, had her send it out. These are all the links that I could find for all of these candidates. And if they are web, their websites, you can just go there for information, donations, but anything that's Facebook, Twitter, there's some Instagrams in here. If you guys are flipping through your phones, uh, watching TV or after dinner or whatever it is, follow all these people, like and repost and share everything they do. Each one of us that does that just adds their voice to everything and increases the turnout for everybody. I threw a couple here, there. I'll give this to, uh, what, how, I want to unshare, stop sharing. Yeah, it's in there. Look for it and, and use it. Follow these people. Retweet every day. Just pick, pick one or two a day. Do it. And, and hopefully the message gets out there as well as, Pick one or two that you're going to do something else for, like donate or spend time um, calling, writing postcards. There's something everybody can do. Every single person can do one or two things that'll help these people. 